In this video, you're going to learn how to represent the electrons in an atom using two different types of notation. The first of which is called an orbital diagram. This is an orbital diagram pictured at the bottom of the screen, which simply means there's a series of boxes and arrows that illustrate where the electrons are found in this atom. Anywhere you see a box here, that represents an orbital. Recall that the 2p sublevel is made of three orbitals, so we've drawn in three boxes. Anywhere you see an arrow in this diagram, well, that represents the electron. Remember, if you're going to put two electrons into the same orbital, they must have opposite spin. So we draw one of the arrows pointing up and the other arrow pointing down. When students learn how to make orbital diagrams, they usually have a few questions, and I'm going to try to answer those now. The first question is, they want to know how many boxes should I draw on my paper? Well, it depends. If you're trying to represent an S sublevel, you should have one box drawn and labeled. If you're trying to represent a P sublevel, you should draw three boxes, labeling that a P sublevel. A D sublevel, of course, would have five boxes, and you probably already know how many an F sublevel has. That's right, seven boxes for the F sublevel. The next question is, how do I know what order to draw all of these? How do I know what box to make first and next? And then is it a P sublevel or is it a D sublevel? And so I'm going to tell you how you know that. There's a list of sublevels. I'm going to give you this list right now, and I'm going to ask that you write this down. Go ahead and do that now. I'm going to wait while you pause my video and write this list down. It is essential when you're learning how to make orbital diagrams that you write these in the correct order. Now that's a lot to remember. That's why I recommended that you write it down. The third question is, when do I stop making boxes? How do I know when I don't have to keep drawing boxes anymore? And that's the easiest question to answer. You stop drawing boxes when you're done. In other words, when you've got a place for all of the electrons in whatever element you're representing electrons for, you can stop drawing boxes. Let's try one of these. We're going to draw the orbital diagram for fluorine. Now when you're drawing an orbital diagram, you're going to need to look on your periodic table. We're going to look up fluorine on our periodic table and find it right over here. So the element fluorine, element number 9, should have 9 electrons and that's what we're going to represent. Next, we're going to draw some boxes. Now on my paper, I've already got the boxes drawn, but on yours, you'll probably have to start from scratch and draw boxes. Remember the order you wrote down. It's the 1s that comes first, and then the 2s comes next. I'm going to start filling in electrons until I get to 9 electrons, because fluorine was element number 9. Notice the way that I enter these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is the representation for fluorine. That was easy. Let's try another one. Next, I'm going to do the orbital diagram for magnesium. So I get out my periodic table, and I look for magnesium. Magnesium is element number 12. So I'm going to draw 12 electrons. Sometimes when I'm drawing these, I'll write out the symbol and the atomic number so that I remember how many electrons I'm doing. Remember, the atomic number is the number of protons, but atoms always have the same number of electrons as they have protons. So 12 electrons will get placed like this. And that's the correct placement for the electrons in a magnesium atom. Let's try one more of these orbital diagrams. This one's a little longer. This is the orbital diagram for an element called selenium. Selenium is element number 34 on the periodic table. That's a lot of electrons. Let's not complain, though. At least I didn't ask you for rutherfordium. So let's fill in some electrons for selenium. We're going to need 34 arrows. I want you to notice the way that I fill these in. First of all, I'm going to follow the off-bow rule and work my way up. Secondly, I'll always put two electrons in a box, one up and one down. And third, watch how these fill in. We like them to be half full before we completely fill each sublevel.
Now remember, I'm drawing arrows until there are 34 of them. And if we do a quick count, we can see that so far, looks like we have about 30. So the last four electrons will all fill in the 4p sublevel. Sometimes I see this when students turn in their work. Can you see the mistake with writing an orbital diagram this way? That's right, we didn't follow a rule that says these electrons want to be spread out. Before we put two electrons in the same orbital, let's spread them out so that each orbital is half filled. I think we understand how to do orbital diagrams now, and I really think you're going to like this next notation even better. Let's talk about electron configuration. At first glance, this looks kind of complicated. All of these numbers and letters and superscripts. Let me explain this notation. Electron configuration is simply a shorter way to write what we've been doing with boxes and arrows. This also shows all the positions of electrons in an atom, though it doesn't give quite as much detail. The larger number in this notation represents the energy level for an electron. So this number 3 that's highlighted tells us the electrons here are in energy level 3. The letter that I've highlighted, this tells us what kind of sublevel it is. Now remember, the type of sublevel determines how many electrons can be held within that sublevel. So a P sublevel, for example, has a maximum capacity of six electrons. And that leads us to the third part of this notation, the exponent. The exponent tells us how many electrons are in that sublevel. When we read electron configuration, we don't actually read it like it were an exponent. We don't read this as 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p to the sixth. We simply read it 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now, let's review the capacity for each sublevel. If we are writing in electrons in an s sublevel, the maximum number of electrons would be 2. However, if we're using a p sublevel, this can hold 6 electrons. How many electrons fit into a d sublevel? There are 10. And finally, the f sublevel, that holds 14. Let's try an electron configuration now for magnesium. When you do the electron configuration for magnesium, first you want to identify how many electrons there are. This is element number 12, which means it has 12 protons and 12 electrons. I'm going to write this down, magnesium, which has 12 protons and electrons. And this time, instead of drawing boxes and filling in arrows, I'm going to simply write 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 6. Remember, these numbers I'm writing in superscript up here tell how many electrons there are. So I've represented 10 electrons so far. There are still two electrons that remain. I wonder where those electrons will end up. What is the next sublevel after you've filled up the 2p? The next sublevel is the 3s, and we're going to put two more electrons there. There's a real easy way to check if we did this right. We're simply going to add up all of these numbers up top and see if they don't add up to the number of electrons. And in this case, they do. Let's try our next example. We're going to write the electron configuration for sulfur. The periodic table shows sulfur over here with 16 electrons. So I write down the symbol for sulfur with the number 16 so that I know what I'm drawing. And then I begin with a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. I'm going to keep writing until I get 16 electrons, so that's 10 so far. This gives me two more, that's 12. And in the 2p, I will not need to fill up this sublevel. I only need four more electrons to make 16. Again, if we add up all of these numbers up here, we'll find out that they make 16. We have correctly represented the electrons in a sulfur atom. One more example. Let's try the electron configuration for a silver atom. Recall that the element symbol for silver is Ag. That is right here, and silver has 47 electrons. Here are the electrons in a silver atom. Now let's do a quick check, make sure that these numbers work out. I'm going to add up each of the superscript numbers here 
and make sure that they all add up to 47. And it looks like they do. So this is how we're going to show electrons around an atom. Either with electron configuration, which is a little shorter, or with orbital diagrams, which involves drawing boxes and filling in arrows. Make sure you watch the next video too, because I've got some great shortcuts to make this even more fun and easy.